Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you all for coming. Uh, thanks to the Glaucoma Foundation of Wills for putting this on. Rita in particular for all the work she put into it and all the volunteers, thank you so much. And thanks, George, uh, again for hosting us and trying to keep everybody on time. As you can see, he, uh, it's a difficult job because all the people that you've heard this morning are so excited about what's happening in glaucoma, it's really hard to condense everything into a short talk. Um, my topic is, is, uh, is kind of futuristic and that we're gonna talk about stem cells for glaucoma. But it really doesn't exist yet, at least not clinically available for any of you yet. But the future looks bright, and the title here is uh, Hope or Hype, and I don't think it's hype. I really do think it's a, a, a true hope that we all have in making this reality in the future. You know, you've heard earlier that glaucoma damage and loss of vision is irreversible and it's the number one cause of irreversible blindness in the world today. So there's a great deal of interest in, in trying to see how we can kind of prevent that from happening, but also perhaps uh, maybe we can even reverse it. That's, that's our true hope. Um, so a lot of our efforts are gonna be geared towards trying to keep uh, renal ganglion cells, which are the nerve cells of vision alive and perhaps even replace them if, if possible. Now we can look at the eye and we can see changes clinically in how the nerve looks um, and, and see the loss of the nerve cells, even on examination when your doctor looks at your eye. And we know that if we reach a critical level, uh, then there's gonna be loss of vision that you can see and then ultimately total blindness. That's what glaucoma can do if unchecked. And if you even do sections of the eye, you can measure the thickness of how much nerve cells there are layering the inside portion of the eye. And that's measured with some of the technologies that we have today, like OCT or HRT have been used to measure the thickness of the nerve tissue in the eye. And that really does thin out with glaucoma at an accelerated rate. We lose a little bit of retinal ganglion cells as we age, but it's a pretty small amount, and really we don't lose enough to seriously damage our vision with our lifespan. So you can look at glaucoma as an acceleration of the aging process where things have really sped up, and we've tried to slow them down with all the therapies you've heard about that are geared towards lowering intraocular pressure, whether it's medications or surgery or laser. We know the renal ganglion cells depend on a host of factors to keep them alive and happy. But there are also competing signals that lead to the loss of the renal ganglion cells, stress, pressure directly, but also chemicals that may at high levels cause the loss of renal ganglion cells. And we'll talk about that in, in a little bit later. So stem cells can be uh, thought about in several different ways. Uh, stem cells uh, can be able to develop into virtually every cell in the body. Those are kind of the pluripotent stem cells. But then there are the multipotent stem cells. And these are stem cells that can develop into different types of cells in the body, but not into all the cells of the body. So for example, if you have a stem cell from the bone marrow, it can develop into all the different blood cells, whether white blood cells, red blood cells, or platelets, but it can't develop into ganglion cells in the optic nerve. Uh, Dr. Yamanaka in 2006 uh, figured out how to take a cell from the skin, a fibroblast skin cell, and induce it to develop an immature stem cell that can develop into any cell type. And he won the Nobel Prize for this. So was, this was ingenious where he was able to modify it by introducing some genetic modifications and have a cell that's already a skin cell revert to a stem cell that can develop into any other cell type. And you'll hear about that as one of the potential stem cells that we use for research. So there can be embryonic stem cells. These are stem cells that are formed in vitro when you get a sperm and an egg and then you get a union and then you start developing an organism, a human being. And so this is at a very early stage 
Um, and these cells can develop into anything in the human body. Um, as you can imagine, there's some ethical concerns about using embryonic stem cells, especially after a certain point. Um, but there are also adult stem cells in various parts of tissues in the body. They're very limited into what they can develop. So again, they may develop into different types of cells in the nervous system or different types of blood cells, but they can't develop into everything in the body. And then there's the induced pluripotent stem cell that was uh, developed back uh, about a dozen years ago uh, by Dr. Yamanaka. So again, uh, for, for us, there are the pluripotent stem cells that are embryonic um, from in vitro development. Uh, you also can get uh, stem cells from um, uh, fetuses, and then you can also get the adult-derived uh, stem cells and induced stem cells. And in glaucoma research, there have been a host of different ways of using stem cells that I've summarized in this slide. We have studies looking at embryonic. We have some at looking at human stem cells from adults, as well as uh, reprogrammed induced pluripotent stem cells. So where do we use these stem cells? And I've kind of put them into uh, three different buckets here for you. One is to just keep the retinal ganglion cells, the nerve cells of the optic nerve, happy. And, and, and they may be damaged, uh, and they're about maybe ready to die, but change that course. So uh, we call that neuroprotection. So keep these retinal ganglion cells survive, surviving, and we can do that maybe with uh, these factors, these neurotrophic factors we'll talk about. But then regeneration or replacement of retinal ganglion cells is an even more daunting task, but there, there is an effort and some interesting work in that regard already. And then finally, there is the plumbing system. So everything I mentioned earlier is all about the, the electrical system of the eye, but the plumbing system, as you've heard other speakers talk to you about, that's the big problem in glaucoma. Something goes wrong with the plumbing, the pressure builds up, and then da damages the electrical system. So maybe we can use stem cells to get the plumbing system to work better. You know, there are uh, kind of a yin and yang in the human body. There's, a, uh, there's signals for cells to die and there's signals for cells to survive. And you may think, well, why, why would you want cells to divide? Well, it, you know, we all develop cells, cancer cells, constantly in our body, but there are signals that tell them to shut off and die. And we want that, that keeps us living, obviously. But if you have a damaged uh, circuitry in terms of control over this, then the cancer cells multiply and then we die. So that would be a deficiency of programmed cell death. But there may be a programmed acceleration of, of cell death, so more stimulation in areas that really we don't want cells to die, like our nerve cells and glaucoma and Alzheimer's disease, for example. There are theories that that may be the problem uh, with control over that yin and yang. So can we alter this yin yang of, of uh, cell survival versus cell death signals? And, and that's where some of the exciting research is already being done. So this is an animal model of glaucoma. And if you take bone marrow stem cells that release this neurotrophic factor, neurotrophic factor meaning it stimulates nerve cells to continue to live, and you inject these bone marrow stem cells into the eyes of animals with glaucoma, releasing their neurotrophic substance, it clearly has a beneficial effect. You're not changing the eye pressure, you're just making the retinal ganglion cells happier and wish to continue to live. Now, what about in the human eye? This has now been carried forward. We actually have some interesting information. There's a company called Neurotech, and they developed this clever little cage in which they put stem cells that secrete neurotrophic factor. So they're trapped in there, and you surgically put this into the eye. This has been done in actual retinal diseases already, and the results have had mixed results. But it's also been used in glaucoma in a pilot trial and they took 11 patients that were getting worse despite very good pressure control, so they were desperate to try something, and they put this device inside their eyes, and the preliminary information shows that these patients not only did well, they actually maybe even did better than before. And this was based on looking at visual field testing, 
which usually doesn't get better in glaucoma patients, they actually look better on that as well as some other tests called contrast sensitivity testing. So that's pretty exciting. So this is kind of promoting survival of the renal ganglion cells, the neurons of the eye, to continue to live. Now what about replacing the renal ganglion cells that are disappeared in the human eye with glaucoma? Well, in this particular study in mice, they took uh, induced pluripotent stem cells. So they were fibroblast skin cells. They were turned into uh, uh, stem cells that then were asked to differentiate into renal ganglion cells. And they did this by chemical mediation. So different chemicals were put around them. And yes, you could, you could take skin cells and actually get them to develop into retinal ganglion cells. Now this is in a in vitro, in a test tube kind of model. Well, they also have taken eyes from people that have passed away, taken stem cells from the eye, and there are a few stem cells in there, and then you also modify them with various chemical mediators, and in vitro, meaning in a test tube, you can get them to develop into renal ganglion cells. Now finally, here's the situation where you take a <clears throat> a human stem cell, and you get them to differentiate in an animal eye, though, so this is in a living eye, into a renal ganglion cell. So this is a stem cell that now is developed into a renal ganglion cell, human renal ganglion cell, in a mouse eye. So that's really exciting. Now, in the human eye, there have been attempts to introduce stem cells to help various ocular conditions. Many of them are retinal problems, like macular de degeneration, where there is no hope and no current treatment for reversing what is called a dry macular degeneration into a normal macula. So they have taken stem cells and injected them in various parts of the eye around the macula, uh, trying to get better function and vision in these patients. And you'd see there are a host of trials looking at that and other ocular conditions, mostly retinal problems. But what I want to point out for you is that there also are some studies that have been kicked off in human studies in glaucoma. Over here, it's a little bit more complicated because we have three different clumps of neurons. There's the human eye neuron, the renal ganglion cell, that connects in the middle part of the brain to the rat lateral geniculate body where there's another neuron. That neuron now travels to the back of the brain, the occipital cortex, where it connects to a third neuron. So you have to get that whole pathway connected and, and talking with each other in order to restore vision. That's pretty complicated. Um, so we've talked about how to uh, keep renal ganglion cells happy and alive with neuroprotection, but how do you actually replace the renal ganglion cells? And that's a real challenging, daunting task that people are already trying. And how do you measure improvement? Well, we're probably going to look at the nerve and see if it improves. We're going to look at it with visual field testing and other ways of measuring function. And that's already being done. Now, there are some studies like this one here, the Scott's trial, which has included glaucoma. And you can see that there are different ways of injecting stem cells, even in these glaucoma eyes, being done in southern Florida. And they're doing a shotgun approach because, frankly, nobody knows exactly how to inject and where to inject the stem cells yet. This is a case uh, that was published about not glaucoma, but optic neuritis, inflammatory condition of the nerve. And the reason I put this out is that this is the only publication I'm aware of showing a benefit of, of, of stem cells for the optic nerve. And they showed a resounding improvement in this particular patient. So this is a very limited glimpse and offering perhaps some hope. But on the flip side, just recently, the New England Journal of Medicine published an article where three people who had injections of stem cells in the eye for retinal problems lost their vision entirely from hemorrhaging and from retinal detachment. So this is not uh, a benign procedure, and we still need to do a lot of work before we can kind of understand exactly how to do this safely and, and hopefully get good results. So here are the challenges for us. Where are we going to get the stem cells? I didn't go into the whole issue of cost and how viable it is and the ethical concerns to any great extent, but we have to sort that out. We have to figure out how to place 
these stem cells, how to get them to hook up and communicate with each other uh, so that we do have transmission of information and we perceive that as vision. Lastly, just very quickly, I'm going to tell you about the plumbing issue that I told you about at the very beginning. Those are electrical problems, but the problem with the plumbing, with the pressure building up and the pipes not working, the trabecular meshwork that has been discussed throughout this morning. Well, we think that the, the trabecular meshwork, part of the reason the pressure builds up is the accumulation of material because there's a lack of cells in the trabecular meshwork that kind of are vacuum cleaners that are supposed to clean out the meshwork. These endothelial cells, if you lose a critical number, we think that might lead to glaucoma. And so how do we repopulate the trabecular meshwork with these little vacuum cleaners? Well, uh, it's been shown that we can indeed do this. We can take stem cells and repopulate the trabecular meshwork in animal models. We don't know yet how that's going to really function, but you would think that they're going to assume that function of cleaning out the meshwork and keep the pressure lower. So that's an exciting step on the plumbing side. So in conclusion, we have a lot of exciting areas in stem cell research that are ongoing, looking at neuroprotection, trying to keep renal ganglion cells from dying. Um, we also have ways of maybe replacing them, kind of um, uh, with uh, stem cells as well, repopulating the optic nerve, excuse me. And then also finally, just getting the plumbing system revitalized and rejuvenated so that the pressures don't build up in the eye. So there's a lot of hope and we're all excited about the future. Uh, again, special thanks to all those that have uh, helped with, the, with putting this meeting together, but I want to thank Danny Lee and Jonathan Myers for really making the CARES Conference uh, such an exciting event. Thank you.